if you're in first hour, um, this problem C might be a little different than the one I had on the board for you yesterday. So this is the one that I gave hours four and seven, and you're welcome to write it down. Um, and if you're in hours four and seven, you can um, zip ahead to the next part of the lesson. All right, hour one. So what we did, um, we took um, our numerator and our denominator and we split that as the logarithm of a subtraction problem. So we did the log of 16 radical x minus the log of 4 a to the third b to the fourth. And then um, within each term we split the multiplication up with addition and the purple brackets indicate that you need to subtract the sum um, for the second term. You have to have that uh, those brackets there in order to distribute your minus sign. And I told the kids that anything with a minus in front should be going on the bottom of your log when we go back and condense it. So if you see a minus in front of something, that indicates that it goes in the denominator. Without those brackets right here, you would have a plus sign right here. And that would indicate that b to the fourth belongs upstairs. So make sure you have those brackets when you're subtracting a quantity. Um, the last step was to um, put the exponents back down to the front. And we also had to figure out that log base 4 of 16 was 2. And I should backtrack just a little bit. The square root was an x to the 1 half. And that 1 half is right there. So all the exponents came to the front. And we got it. All right, for the last part of your lesson, and I'm just scrolling ahead to make sure, yeah. Example six is all we had left in the notes. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly how to condense, and then the notes are finished. So here we go. Um, I see subtraction here, so this will go in the denominator, and I see addition here, so this will go in the numerator. So I just kind of labeled those so you can kind of see just by the sign in front um, where these terms are going to go. But before you move them, you have to put your exponents back. All right, so I put the exponents back where they belong, and now I'm going to do it as a single logarithm. So it's a log of a single quantity, which means you only get to write the word log one time. So we decided that, let's see, and this is a positive term, so that's going to go in the numerator. So it would be the log of x. Um, this, remember, goes in the denominator, so y squared. Remember, this went in the numerator because it has a plus sign in front, so that would be z to the third. Okay, um, this one has some double brackets. It looks like it's kind of a mess, so let's try to squeeze it all together inside first, and then we'll worry about the one half that's on the outside. So it's kind of like order of operations. You're going to come inside and work first. Okay, that exponent's going to go back here. And this exponent's going to go here. Okay, let's see here. I see a bunch of um, addition in here, so I'm going to switch that to some multiplication. Oops, I forgot my x right there. Sorry about that. Okay, so I have condensed these two with multiplication, and now I'm going to keep condensing inside. Now this one can actually be cleaned up. There's x to the seventh sitting right there, so. Mm 
Now there's no need to foil out the x minus 1 to the second. You can leave it alone. But this 1 half indicates that you have a square root over all of this. And we could clean that up a little bit. Um, we could take, let's see, x to the seventh, that would be an x to the third coming out with one left inside, um, and an x minus one. Now, do you need to do that step? I don't know if it's really necessary. I would be really happy if you guys got this far. I mean, this is like the most reduced answer you can give me. Um, but either answer is fine for logarithms. Um, you might be wondering why these bars are around x minus 1, and that's because I want to keep that positive. Um, I want to ensure that when I take the square root of x minus 1 uh, quantity squared, that that root coming out is a positive one. So it's just customary to put the bars around it. I believe we saw that earlier in quarter 1. Okay, so you guys can work here with B, and you could actually stop here if you wanted to. If you wanted to clean it up, you would go this far. Um, let's see here. Why don't I give you one more just to practice with? I'll put it under your practice problems. And then you can go back and finish your practice problems. Let's do the natural log of x to the fifth uh, minus the natural log of x minus 2 uh, plus 1 half of the natural log of y to the third plus, um, I'll just do actually I kind of messed that up. Let's see, let's put that 5 in front. That way you don't have any head starts. Uh, let me just start that over. Sorry guys. Okay, this will be fine, I think. We won't make it too extravagant. So we'll have the ln of x to the fifth plus the ln of x minus 3 to the 1 half minus the ln of y. Okay, so remember you only get to write the natural log one time, and that's pretty important to remember. You don't put a log on the top and a log on the bottom. Um, this addition goes back to multiplication, and then I'm subtracting the y. Your last thing would be to make that a square root over the x minus 3. All right, common mistake. I should have mentioned this up here. Um, a common mistake, especially on a question like A, would be to write this right here. That's incorrect. You only get to write the log one time. So just make sure that you write the um, expression with a log of a single quantity, which means you get to use the word log one time. All right, that's the end of your notes. You guys have a great Thanksgiving break.